Okay. Well, let's get to it. Let's, hey, let's uh, configure a big IP and I'm gonna grab my phone here and I'm gonna, I'm gonna set a timer because I want to, I, I said at the beginning of this video that it was gonna be super easy, super quick to get a VPN solution stood up. So I wanted to prove that and time this. So I'm gonna start a timer right now. Now my particular network configuration is super simple. It's sitting in AWS right now. I've got one single big IP protecting a single Linux server right behind it. Now, you may say, oh, dude, that's super simple. Well, conceptually, it's the same, right? We've got security groups, NACLs, and AWS. You would have a firewall, multiple firewalls in your on-prem, and then you've got a server farm, right? It's the same thing. I just don't have a server farm. I've got a Linux server. So the concepts are the same. For the sake and purpose of this demo, we wanted to keep it super simple. So I just wanted to explain the topology for you real quick. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna create a AAA object. And the reason why we're doing this is because we're gonna use a wizard on the big IP to create our VPN configuration. And we're gonna use the wizard because I said it's gonna be simple and fast, and I'm gonna show you how to do that. But before we do that, we can't, because of the limitations of the wizard, it doesn't allow me to select a local database authentication method. So I have to create the local database authentication first. And I will say that not many people know that the big IP is capable of housing a local database for authentication. And it's not heavily used, right? It's used in these particular scenarios, but it could also be used in a, you know, if you have a disconnected use case, like an emergency, maybe something like this, right? Where you need to give access, but you don't have time to configure an Active Directory connection or spin up a new Active Directory or LDAP. This will allow you to give temporary access and use this uh, database authentication method. So it's very handy. So we're gonna leave everything here at the defaults. You can read about this in the guides, setting the lockout turn uh, intervals and the thresholds. We're not gonna mess with any of that. We're just gonna create the database now. And then we're gonna create a user for the database because we need a user to authenticate with. So let's create the user. We're gonna call this user F5admin and let's give it a password. And we're not gonna do forced password change here. Um, you could do that if you want. It's already pre-populated with the database instance we created. You could come in here and put some personal information. You could even create user groups if you wanted to. So you could create like a Linux user group or a Windows Server admin group, whatever you like. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna keep everything pretty simple here. And we're done. So we've got our database created and we have our user created. Super simple stuff, right? So let's go to our wizard. Let me just come in a little bit here, zoom in so you can see this. So when you hit wizard, it automatically populates with the network access setup wizard. And it gives you a description of, of what that is. And it's got some other wizards here too, like if you wanna set up a, a web app, what we call a, um, LTM APM, which is basically just protecting uh, an application with authentication, you could do that. You could also do a portal access setup wizard where it uses the same type of web top, but it doesn't use VPN as a, as a VPN traditionally. It's what the buzzword is in, in the industry is a clientless VPN. This is where you would do something like that in the portal access setup wizard. But let's get started with our network access setup because I told you this is gonna be quick and I'm, I'm burning time here. So policy name, we're gonna name it VPN. We're gonna enable the full web top I'm not gonna get into what that is. I'm gonna show you what that is at the end of the demo. We'll see what that is. We're gonna disable client-side checks and then we're gonna give it a gateway address, right? So the 2.1 in this instance is the external subnet on the big IP that this is the gateway on the AWS side. So 2.1 is the gateway that the external subnet on the self IP of the big IP will use to direct outgoing traffic. So let's create an NTP server. Now we're gonna give it just a generic one. No, uh, no need to configure any more, but 
as a best practice, you should be configuring at least, I believe now F5 recommends a minimum of three, could be four, but the more the better, right? NTP is an important piece of your network infrastructure and it is an important piece of your big, I config, big IP configuration. A lot of issues occur on the big IP because companies don't have NTP properly configured. Now, we created that local database instance first, and that's because when we're using the wizard, it doesn't give us the option to select that local database option. This is for the wizard in the network access. I don't know why, I think it used to be there, but it's not there anymore. Regardless, we had to create it first. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna select no authentication, and we're gonna go back into the policy manually and add it. So let's click next. This is where you're gonna add a lease pool. Now, we're keeping it super simple. So I'm just assigning an IP address on the internal side, self IP. It's gonna snap anyways in this instance, we're using AutoMap. So it's gonna use the self IP of the big IP on the internal side. So this really doesn't matter, but production, you, you can choose a snap or not. You can use lease pools, multiple lease pools, assign them to users based on Active Directory attributes, whatever you like. But we're gonna keep it super simple here. Let's add, let's click next. Once again, we're gonna keep things simple. No compression. We're gonna use a full, tra a full tunnel for our traffic. We're gonna force everything through the tunnel. You could use split tunneling here, right? So we can add in our address land space that we wanna allow access to. We can do things like allow local subnet. We can do client-side security, which if you check this, will prohibit routing table changes on the client machine if they're connected to the VPN, so an, ad an added security measure. And then DTLS, so we're not gonna get into that either, but I highly recommend you check it out because if you, you may have a use case in your organization where you need to really optimize traffic and DTLS is one, one way to do that. So let's just keep force all traffic, traffic through tunnel and click next. We're gonna keep the, the name server the same. So obviously this is where you would configure all of that. Uh, you can set static host here as well. We're gonna keep everything the way it is. And finally, this is where we're gonna set our VIP, our virtual IP address. And this particular is a private IP. And this is added to a public IP that I have configured in AWS. And then we're also doing a redirect on the server from HTTP to HTTPS. So it'll allow a user to access this initially over clear text, but it will be, he or she will be redirected to the HTTPS server. And let's create next. We now come to our review configuration screen. It's gonna give you an overview of what you've done. This all looks good. So we're gonna click next. I'm just gonna scroll out or zoom out just a bit here so we can get a wider screen here. So this is the setup summary. Now I mentioned that we're using a wizard. Now there's an article created by an SC or a former SC called Steve Lyons. He's now an account manager with F5. And he goes through this setup, a VPN setup, manually, meaning that you have to create the access profile, the connectivity profile, the web top, all of this stuff, right? And it requires whether, if you don't have a guide like he created, it requires some deep APM knowledge. If you don't have that knowledge or don't have his guide, using the wizard is an easy way to get this set up very quickly, like I just showed you. Basically, we're done, we've configured the VPN. Now we've got an extra step we've got to do. We've got to add in that AAA object. But for the most part, most of the configuration is done. So if we look here, we can see that it created the lease pool, created a web top, profiles, and even created our virtual servers. So pretty cool stuff. So we're done. Let, well, we're not. All, we're almost done. We need to go into the policy, but I just wanted to show you that it in fact created the virtual servers for us. So automatically done for you. So let's go to access. Let's access our policy. We named the VPN, so this is the correct one. Let's click edit. Okay, so this is our policy. This is the VPE or the visual policy editor. This is where you configure your access policy. And it's very intuitive in the way that it flows from left to right. So. You can imagine starting with our login page on the very left and moving through the policy to our resources and then it's either an allow or deny. Now in this case, we don't have any authentication. 
So we can log in this login page right now and freely access the network because we're not authenticating, there's no deny, it's not a really good setup. So let's add some authentication so the bad guys can't get in. So authentication. So you can see here, we've got quite a few components that we could do here. We could do SAML, TACX, LDAP, Active Directory. There's a lot of things you could do here, and this, you would be using these normally in a production environment. But for simplicity's sake, we're gonna use a local database that we created earlier as our authentication mechanism. So we're gonna add that item. We're gonna come over to the agent and select our database instance that we created earlier. We're gonna leave everything default. We're gonna click save. And now we're good. What we're gonna do here last is apply the access policy because anytime you make changes in a VPE, you have to apply the policy changes. And it's gonna let you know that with that yellow. So we've applied it and we're good to go. So now we have a full policy. It's very simple, but we have a login page right here. If you click on that, you can actually modify this to whatever you like. So we could add additional fields here if we want to, like a pin. If we had a hardware token, we can configure that here, right? You do a lot of different things. The VP is extremely flexible. So after we log in, we passed in our username and password is going to get passed to this authentication, our, our database that we created. And if we're successful, we're then going to be issued the resources. So that's our web top and our VPN. And we're going to show you that in just a moment. And then we get allow, we get access to it. If we're locked out, we get a deny. If our password and username are wrong, we're going to fall back to this branch, which is deny. And we keep going until we either locked out or we successfully log in. All right, so that's it. We have configured the VPN and it took eh, a little under 12 minutes. I've done it faster. Obviously we had to create the database and do some explaining, but I could probably configure this in probably three minutes, maybe less.